May the Lord Jesus Christ richly and abundantly bless you. For those of you that have just joined us, wherever in the world you are, we welcome you to the program, a study in the Word here on Radio Easter Hour. May the Lord Jesus Christ richly bless you and may He be with you. Thank you for those that are loyal listeners and supporters that have always tuned in. And thank you for even sending in more listeners that they can also share in the blessings that has been prepared and stored here for us. So this is Brother Elmer and I will be sharing with you the Word of God as it is written in the Holy Bible, the Holy Scriptures as it is called. And we would just like to take this opportunity to study the Word of God. And we are called as Christians to study the Scriptures. And we should examine all things. We should prove all things. We cannot just accept things blindly the way it is being presented to us. It is very important that we try the spirits, even as the Bible says in the book of 1 John chapter 4. It says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they be of God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. So we cannot believe every spirit. They are impersonating spirits. They are enticing spirits. They are evil spirits. They are religious spirits out there. And they are deceiving the peoples of the world. And they all fall under the kingdom of darkness. And we as Christians should have discernment. And we should examine everything in the light of the word of God. Now, tonight's study, we shall read from the book of Revelation chapter 2 and verse 11. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. May the Lord Jesus Christ add his blessings to the reading of his word. Now for those that have pen and paper, you can just draw that closer and just write down all the verses that will be pulled to during tonight's sermon. And may the Lord just bless you and give you insight. So beloved, we shall speak tonight about he that hath an ear, let him hear. So this is a phrase found in the Bible more than seven times. We read about it throughout the Gospels of Matthew, Mark and Luke where Jesus many times would speak in parables and as he would speak in parables he would always leave this at the last of the sentence He that hath an ear, let him hear and we see even after his death, burial and resurrection he was addressing the seven churches the seven churches found among the Gentiles we know that when Jesus was first sent, he was sent but to none but the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This is Matthew chapter 10. But we see that after he had accomplished his mission as the Messiah by laying down his life and shedding his blood, we see that our Lord, the God of heaven, he turned him to the Gentiles because he came to his own and his own knew him not. The Bible says that the world was made by him and the world knew him not. And he came to his own people, which was the people of Israel, which was the Jewish people, the Jewish race. The race that he had chosen, the people that he chose for his name. And we see that when he came to his own, his own received him not. But we see that he, he was rejected by his very own. And the Lord Jesus Christ turned from the Jews to the Gentiles. And the Gentile church is made up of every tongue, type, uh, tongue and nation. It's made of all races of people, all languages. And this church is divided into seven epochs or seven eras, seven ages. And we see in the book of Revelation chapter 1 that Jesus after his resurrection was being portrayed as being found as the one girded, a golden girdle around his paps, his breast. And we see him walking in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. And these seven golden candlesticks represented the seven churches. So our Lord was seen walking in the midst of His church. And His church is made up from seven different eras. Now the past seven, 2000 years since Christ until now is divided in seven different ages known as the seven church ages. And in the seven church ages we find people people that have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord, as their Savior, people that have turned from darkness to light, people that have been saved by grace through faith, people that have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, people that are sanctified by the Word of God and filled with the Holy Spirit. And this people is the body of Christ. And the body of Christ is the same as the bride of Christ. 
and the bride is made up from seven churches and the Lord had a message that he addressed to each of the seven churches and usually at the end of the message he would say that he that hath an ear let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the churches and it's so important that we should have ears to hear now when the Bible uses this phrase ears to hear it does not refer to the natural ear now the natural ear we use to detect sounds you're using your ears to listen to me I'm listening my ears to listen to you but when the Lord speaks about he that has ears let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches it does not refer to just natural ears because with the natural ears people can hear a lot of things people can hear a lot of information people can even hear the Bible and they can still not understand what is being said so when our Lord is speaking when he is speaking about he that has ears let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches ears refers really to understand because many are hearing they are hearing the Word of God but they are not understanding what is being said and it is only the Lord that can give you ears to hear it is only the Lord that can give you understanding we see in Luke chapter 24 after the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ he was speaking to two people that were on the way to Emmaus and as they were walking about what and talking about what happened and transpired in the city of Jerusalem about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and how they were speaking and saying they thought that he would be the one that would deliver Israel but it was now the third day since all of this happened we see Jesus appearing himself in their very midst and Jesus starting to speak to them yet they recognized him not but as Jesus spoke to them he expounded the scriptures he opened up their understanding and the Bible says and their eyes were open and they knew him and that is what happens when the Lord gives you ears to hear the Lord gives you firstly the correct understanding and once you have the correct understanding then your eyes will be open then you will be able to understand the things concerning the kingdom of God now throughout the seven churches there have been many people that lived in the past during those epochs during those eras but not all of them could understand what was being said only the elect of God those that were chosen according to Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4 chosen in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him only those are the ones that have insight only those are the ones that have the ability to hear what the Spirit is saying unto the churches only those who have been chosen of God are the ones to whom the Spirit reveals the Word of God and to whom the Spirit reveals God to that individual and the Spirit will never speak outside of the Word of God the Spirit will always remain within the boundaries of the Word of God the Bible makes it very plain it says in the book of John chapter 16 that when the Comforter will come the Holy Spirit it says that the, the Comforter will remind us of the things that Jesus already spoke so the Comforter will not speak new things the Comforter will not bring in something contrary to what was already said but the Comforter the Spirit of Truth the Holy Spirit shall bring into remembrance that which Jesus had already spoken and the Comforter is the one that reveals the word of Jesus to his followers because the Comforter is Jesus himself if you read John chapter 14 John chapter 16 Jesus says that he now dwells with you and he shall be in you and that is exactly what the Holy Spirit is it is Christ in you the hope of glory nothing else nothing less that is what he is and Christ cannot contradict himself Christ cannot contradict his word but Christ remains true and faithful to his own words he says in Matthew chapter 24 verse 35 heavens and earth shall pass away but my word shall never pass away that's thus say of the Lord out of the Bible God's word is eternal we can stand upon it we can build our lives upon it we can even lay down our lives for it because it's faithful it's trustworthy and it has stood the test of time it has stood the test of ages what was spoken in the Word of God thousands of years ago we see the fulfillment even today one thing is for sure 
God keeps his word. God keeps his promise. God's word is true. And God will stay true to what he has spoken in his word. Now only the spirit can give you the ability to understand what he is saying. What he is making known to the churches. And there are those that have ears, the Bible says, but they cannot hear. You can read this in Isaiah chapter 6. When the Lord commissioned the prophet Isaiah to go and preach to the people of Israel. The people whose hearts had been hardened. And we can see that during that time, the people of Israel was just practicing religion. Religion, but their hearts were far away from God. And God sent the prophet Isaiah to them to go and speak to a people that have ears but cannot hear, eyes but cannot see. And these people of whom Isaiah spoke in Isaiah chapter 6, we see Jesus referring back to Isaiah in the book of Mark chapter 7, in the book of Matthew chapter 15, Jesus was speaking about these people, these people that are religious, these people that practice religious ceremonies these people that follow religious principles but these same people who have eyes and do not see ears and do not hear he was speaking about these people that were teaching for doctrine the commandments of men now these people of whom jesus spoke and of whom isaiah spoke these people are dead and passed on but the spirit that was in those people or upon those people are still alive today Many people are religious and they perform religious duties, but their hearts are far from God. And God condemns such people and God says in Mark 7 verse 7, In vain do you worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. There are those that elevate their own traditions and their own doctrines above the word of God. There are those that have their own teachings, teachings their own dogmas, and they substitute that with the word of God. And Jesus condemned this very strongly and he even branded it as a vain worship worship that is not acceptable to God and many people are religious today and they can refer back to their parents their grandparents their great-grandparents how that they were religious but in the kingdom of God there is not grandchildren and great-grandchildren we are all children of God and the Bible makes it very plain in 1st John chapter 3 it says, Behold, what a great love the Father has shown unto us, that we can be called the sons of God. Then in John chapter 1, verse 11 and 12, the Bible says to us that have accepted Him, He gave the power to become the sons of God. God has sons and daughters. And regardless if your parents or grandparents or great-grandparents were good sons, religious people, you need to have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to bow your knees. You need to confess your sins. You need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. You need to do your own believing and you need to do your own dying. It is an individual affair. It is a personal affair. Romans 14 verse 10 verse 12, the Bible says that each and every one of us shall give an account of himself before God. So you need to answer before the Lord for your life and what you have done with the life that he has given unto you. It will not be the one person giving an account for the next person, but it will definitely be you standing before the Lord and giving an account of your very own life and what you did with it. So it is an individual affair. God does not deal with groups and organizations and big people uh, in some massive gathering, but God deals with each and every person separately. And we need to come to the realization that we will all stand before God and give an account. Now, as I said, Jesus speaks about vain worship. There are those that are worshiping, but their hearts are far from God. Now you might attend church and you might come across as being religious. But if you are religious without having a personal relationship, a personal fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ, such religious practices is totally in vain. And God does not accept such religious practices. But God wants to be worshipped in a certain way. The Bible says in John 4 verse 24 that God is a spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in truth and in spirit and that is how it is 
God wants to be worshipped in truth and in spirit. And we cannot worship God by lies. We cannot worship God by things that are half true. But we need to worship God by the truth. Speaking the truth, practicing the truth, and having the true word of God. There are those that falsify the word of God. There are those that add and subtract the word of God. And we have a very stern warning with regards to this. In the Revelation 22, the Bible makes it very plain that those that will add unto the word of God, the plagues written in the book of Revelation will be added to such a person. But in those that will take away from the word of God, they, that person's part will be taken away from the book of life in the holy city and of the good things which are written in the book. So it is a very serious matter to not add or subtract to the word of God. It is a very serious matter to not modify the word of God. We must adapt to the word of God, not the word of God to us. Many times people try to change things and try to make things fit the day and age that we are living in. And some people even say that the Bible is no longer relevant in the day and age that we are living in. And that we are living in modern times. But the Bible makes it very plain in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. The Bible even says in Malachi chapter 3 verse 6, I the Lord have not changed. So we cannot substitute the Bible, we cannot change the Bible to adapt to our day and age. But we need to adapt to the Bible. We need to make sure that our experience